man. This is take two. <laughs> take. This is take two. Just a few so, seconds. Or maybe a minute in. We realized <laughs> there was no red here, so. Our not podcast is starting off in epic fashion. I think it wasn't live. Because <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were muted, but we were having one awesome conversation. We were having a heck of a conversation just between two of us over here, just like we normally do. Just, just sharing the tea. We did. Tea. We did explain to start it off was that we've been oh, sick, and that's, that's why you didn't get one last week. That he yes. got it first. He he passed it on to the whole family, and I was the last one to get it. So last week we were kind of down and out. So that's why it's taken us a little bit to get back, and it's yes. quite late tonight because it's been a long day. Labor yeah. Day. Labor Day celebration. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I did a lot of yard work today. She did a lot of spring house cleaning. Spring? It feels like it. Because it was a, it was a mm. lot done today. This, this is coming into my favorite time of the year. If we were yeah. pod, it, the next time y'all might see us, and f this background won't be here, we might be sitting in front of my Halloween houses. But <laughs> it is September 1st. It's okay. He doesn't oh. let me bring it out before the... No. No <laughs> Halloween stuff. <laughs> I'm out. He gives you two she months. She tries to pull it out early all the time. No. 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 September 1st. But one of but. our children has a birthday, and normally we do them at the house, and so you can't yeah. really mix the decorations up. That wouldn't be fair, so normally I wait. But, so we're good. But so. we were we were deep in that conversation. Like, we jumped right yeah. into yeah, yeah. it. We said it's tea time. Tea time. We're we were talking about... Spilling the tea, the, sharing the tea, talking about the tea, all the tea today. We were talking about the tea that has been dropped on the... Fishing scene today, Labor Day. Um, wow. Who did it? First organization to yeah. ban forward facing sonar, the NPFL, announced today, and every other person <laughs> seems to have reshared and shared. And I mean, even all the big companies, Tackle Warehouse, and, and uh, just yeah, just just every company you could think of, every person you could think of decided this is something we need to talk about today. So this has definitely been that's why we got our tea. Yeah, because it's been the tea for today. Yeah, but um, you need to go back and restate what we had just started to say. He started to say about he's he's seen it on Instagram. I'm not on Instagram. Yeah. Facebook is where I'd seen it kind of drop from the BassCast, dropped the article. That's right. Um, but the comments that I've seen are different than what you've seen. I had not So you seen, haven't seen any of those comments? No, about the 85%. Yeah, so I've seen several MPFL anglers in the comments talking about a survey that they had done that showed... 85% of the field was in favor of forward-facing sonar. And that this ban on 2025 season, no forward-facing sonar, was a complete shock to the anglers. And those well, those anglers that were commenting specifically. Mm -hmm. And they, in the comments, were like, I will be taking my money elsewhere. Thank you all for not listening to us. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. In the comments, like... You could tell there were some emotions behind those comments. Um, just seems it, weird you would do a survey and then not yeah, listen yeah. to the majority voice, like majority wins kind of thing. I don't know what yeah. the point of the survey was, if you weren't going to listen to it anyways. Or you just like, okay, if one person said they don't want it, then we're out. <laughs> or are they looking for a specific person? I don't mm -hmm. know. You know how that goes. But They but, definitely won the... Tea time on the internet today, on social Day. media today. Yeah, they definitely will. Well, that. my my thing is with Fort Face Sonar. We brought it up on the last podcast, not podcast. Um, I love that name, the yeah. not podcast. We, we, you know, I brought it up before that you know it's just like it's just a tool. It's another tool, and it is. Um, you know, what I there are some comments that I've seen on um, Facebook that that's why I say they're different comments i've seen you know are people that are in favor for not having four faces sonar and the reasons behind it some of them that i've seen 
are specifically related to the cost, that not everybody can afford yeah. to put this on their boat, so this evens the playing field because nobody can have it. Okay, well, hold on. Um, last time I checked, there are baits that are also not affordable for people to buy. So yeah, not regular are, guys are buying so, $200 glide baits. So, what are, so, yeah. so then should it really be, okay, now you got to stop at the store and go get your live bait? Go get your minnows, everybody. No more tackle from the store because it's not an yeah. even playing field because and on top of that let, let's not forget the guys that are out there and i'm not going to mention any of the names but the bigger names that get baits that you can't even have your hands on because they give them to them first and then so what advantage do they have so um I, I don't really understand this whole no for I know I'm not out there fishing, obviously. Yeah. Well, you. I'm seeing it from the other perspective that just doesn't make sense to me. It's another tool. It's technology. Either you learn it or you don't, and everybody has the same opportunity to learn it. So I don't understand why it's just like oh, it's such. A, I mean, is it harming the fish population? Is it? Well, you know, what what are the things behind it? I don't understand it. That's the three comments I've seen like repeatedly over and over again is the guys that are super upset emotionally distraught a lot of them are MPFL anglers I mean just livid about this drop bomb on top of them um, the other ones are the guys talking just like you said why, why stop there why don't we get rid of side imaging why don't we get rid of 360 why don't we get rid of uh, spot lock. Why don't we get rid of power poles? Why don't we get rid of four strokes? Why don't we get rid of uh, super expensive baits? And I mean, just where? Why are we stopping at one thing? Why? Why don't we go? You know, all these advancements. You know, let's just let's, let's go on back down to uh, uh, fiberglass bathtub and a little two-stroke motor and. And three or four rods that you know. Everybody get their rubber duck. I saw yep, that and, boat. Somebody and fifty had... <laughs> pounds of tackle is all you get. I mean, uh, we got to go back to that. So uh, that was the other one. And then the third one was there's actually a lot of people super happy about it mm -hmm. um, because obviously there's a lot of people disgruntled about um, forward face and sonar, and they don't like the sport going in that direction. They don't. They want to see other types of fish catches. And when you are, especially a lot of bodies of water, if you yeah. go to them at certain times where four face sonar is going to dominate, you're not going to see anything else. Yeah, they don't want to see people staring at the screen. I yes. hear that all the time. So they lives. want to I'm see. I'm tired of somebody staring at a screen, but. Yeah. But they want, to, they want to see. They want to see diversity in their fish catches. Mm-hmm. And, and it makes sense. I understand. I'm a spectator just as much as I am an actual uh, athlete in the sport. So I understand. It's pretty cool to be watching a live footage and see one guy catching a giant on a buzz bait. And then the next guy's pitching a, a jig under a dock and catching a big one. And then the next guy's fishing way offshore with a Carolina rig. I mean, it's just, it's, it's nice to see that diversity. But... Didn't MLF for the this past year for the BPT or you know I know they do some off different things. Didn't they do some where they do they do some where they couldn't use Fort Face Sonar on a certain day or something? It was some kind of maybe I'm wrong. Well, I don't know what I'm thinking about. I feel like they did something different. They do have. Uh, I'm pretty sure the team series has this. That's, I think the heavy hitters might have this as well. They have, they have, uh, just like the old school when MLF first came up. They have where they give you a boat. Uh, and oh, those, that's the same. Yeah, yeah. Same and those time. those tournaments are the, they're not all the bells and whistles that yeah, yeah. the elite pros and the BPT pros have on their regular rigs because they're fishing out of their boats. Um, so they're kind of it's kind of like. Setting you know. the playing field. That was like when you did the All American in 2000. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like the All Yep. No, it was. It was the year we got married. It was the year we got married? Yeah, so we were engaged. I mean, that's then. It's got to be, yeah. It was earlier. It was because we were engaged. That's right. It was June, June of 11. Something. I just June remember that when you won that money, we that's how we paid for our catering. <laughs> that's how I so know. That's how you remember it. 
Um, and Jacob Wheeler, but man, it didn't feel like it's that long ago. And I remember but, they had yes, all the boats. There, so right? all the boats were the same. All I had to do was pick whether I wanted uh, Minn Kota or Motor Guy, Trolling mm-hmm. Motor, um, for the event. But every mm-hmm. all the rigs were just about the exact same. I think they were all five twenties. Um, they were just it was just across the board the same. Yeah. Yes, and that's very similar to the, the I think the team series is that way. And then um, I, don't, I can't remember if heavy hitters is that I think heavy hitters is that way as well. But their regular events are not. They get to fish out of their their boats. Does it give them more? I mean, I guess in events like that, I'm just wondering. Does it give? Um, do they see their ratings go up as far as viewership? Because you know you hear the complaint that's that you hear is that people don't like watching. I'm not going to watch it because there's going to be nothing but Fort Payne sonar people. Especially if they know like a specific lake and they're like, oh, that lake, that all this is going to be is Fort Payne Sonar. I'm not going to watch somebody stare at the screen. Well, so I'm just curious if they see it in their numbers of viewership. Do people really not? I'm sure they, just they say do. It, I'm sure they, just... they know that stuff because they always, I do know at Bassmaster Classic, they always promote how much viewership they got, how many hours they got, and all that. I know our tournaments, they do the same thing. When we're done with our invitationals, they send out a email mm-hmm. to us that shows a press release of, hey, we did a good job on this one. We got a lot of views, whatever. Um, so, yeah, they, they keep up with that stuff. But I don't know. So, for example, the Bassmaster Classic this year. Forward facing sonar. All the bells and whistles, electronics-wise, well, allowed. Mm-hmm. Um, no cap on that. Um, it was actually one with Ford Face and Sonar. And they touted, uh, I remember right after it, they talked about how they had one of the biggest viewing shows ever. I mean, it was it was mm-hmm. above and beyond. You know, it was the Super Bowl bass like it's supposed to be. Um, I don't, I mean, you see limitations like on motors. Like I know when I read the rules for... Um, the invitationals, you know, I, you read there's different guidelines, like there's limitations, like it can't be a, can't be too small, but it also can't be too big. Like there's a range yeah, that normally your have, motor has to be in. It so, can't I mean, be over 250 horsepower. You have things like that that are going on now that are in the rules that have yeah. probably been there for a long time. So, I mean, I, I'm surprised that they did the big jump. You know, straight to Bannon. Straight to Bannon instead of maybe putting, you know, because some of the other comments and, and things that I've heard is, you know, oh, it's not fair this person can have a, you know, big screen like this. Not really, you know. If somebody has that on the front of their boat, I'm pretty sure it's a safety hazard. But whatever. Pretty close yeah. to the size they have on I mean, that's boats. what I would want to be looking at. I Those mean, MBTs are pretty close You wouldn't that. break your neck doing that. But... <laughs> You know, it have a limitation on maybe the screen. Yeah. You know, you can't the have sizes. the size. You know, maybe Total you can't inches have... or something. You know, yeah. I've, something. I've or actually, you can't have more than one screen or something. I just can't believe they jumped so far to the order's going to ban it. Yeah. I mean, one, your boat's kind of rigged that way. I mean, who's going to want to take yeah, it off? that's another thing. To go fish those tournaments and then put it back on to go fish, you know, an MLF, which, you know, or bass. You know, you're hearing it's potential for it to happen in other areas, yeah. you know. But I feel like they've been talking about it for a long time. This is just the first place you've seen somebody jump and say they're doing Yeah, it. so if it remains untouched on Major League Fishing and bass yeah. and MPFL is the only one that bans it. Yeah. I don't know how the anglers will feel about going to an elite series or BPT um, event fishing with six or seven graphs, then turning around and having to jerk everything off. I'm Nobody assuming, would want to do that. I'm assuming that's how they're going to do it. You have to take it all off because... Or is it just like, is there just a box with a four face on you I to take know. off? I don't know. You know because you have it. Well... <laughs> No, you can hand hitch take the box out, but still, a lot of that, my box is uh, wired and... with uh, bolts inside of my rod locker up underneath the corner. I mean, it wouldn't be easy. And to oh. have to take the transducer off too, just in case somebody had an extra box. I don't, I don't yeah, know be, how that would all be work. Weird I don't know how they're going to block it all out. Um, if, they, if they got something where they can just plug them in, and if you plug into the back of the unit, say... You put a cap over the connector, and they make it where it's sealed, kind of like um, 
when I worked at the fire department, the drug boxes had locks. And you mm-hmm. could tell when it was broken. So if they do that, and if they have like something where they can cap it off. You're going to spend money on that mess. But, but where you don't have to take your electronics actually yeah. off of the boat. But it's I just know. interesting. I wonder if they've even thought about that. Yeah, I mean, I if you just said, oh, we're just banning it, and then they don't think about the angler and, and the work that they have to go yeah. put into because obviously most people don't just fish one yeah. league or is it a league? Isn't that called a yeah. league? Yeah. I don't call MLF a league or Bass League. I just call it an leagues. organization, but whatever. When you fish, you know, and you're going back and forth. I, mean, I just can't imagine you're taking it off. And certainly you're not going to have two boats. Like, oh, here's my MPF. L boat with no four faces sign well, I mean, some, some people can do that. We some know of those that, big okay? names do have multiple boats. John we, Cox, I know, has well, multiple boats. We we know that, but I um, mean, but still, I mean, that's not realistic. Yeah, for, I don't know how. And <laughs> at the same time, I wonder how many people are going to try to. This is a thought I had. Um, work around it, and what I mean by that is, I say, how you do that? So, structure scan is a tool that I use structure scan a lot for finding fish in my practice right around and stuff and I wonder if people will start trying to utilize something like that or 360 on a faster spin rate or whatever trying to use the technology we have that's still available you mm-hmm. know forward facing is going to be blocked out but still trying to utilize the technology we have to maybe still catch those same suspended offshore fish. That's something I'm wondering about. You know, how how would they try to... Because that's, that's something that is in my head, is that we've unlocked that the fish yeah. are a lot more, you know, yeah. bait-oriented and a lot more offshore than we ever imagined. You know, when we... Back in the days where we didn't have that technology... Yeah. We didn't know the fish were in these weird places. And He's now going to take what they learned from you. Yes, it, so. or, or just go out there and say, okay, I know these fish are suspended out mm-hmm. here, and I'm just going to go out here, and I'm just going to blind cast to get five. You know, how many people are still going to try to fish those same fish, maybe without the technology? that Or try to find an adjunct to the technology, because, like I said, structure scan, I could see somebody putting it on the trolling motor, and taking the troll motor and just going straight and be shooting out. And when they pass a fish, you know, they'll just turn and because and, it's shooting off to the side. It's still the same kind of principle, you well, know. Let me just say, for me, I still feel like Fort Face and Sonar now. I've, I've looked at your screen when we've been out there. Yeah. Now, to me, it still looks like an Atari screen. I mean, it looks like that, you know, space. Ding, 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 ding. I don't know what the heck the little dots are. He's like, oh, there's the bait dropping and there's the fish. Yeah. Okay. The, the, to me, the it's not some it. three, it's not like high definition TV looking yeah, at like it. Yeah. In my head, that's what I thought it was going to be when I went over there. I thought I'm actually going to be seeing like a video of the fish. No, I was not. So, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's still a little, I'm like, a little like, it's just a little strange because, you know, there are people that have mastered it, obviously. We've mentioned those before. Yeah. I mean, and I'm sure there's just so many people that have just taken the time to master it and figure it out. And, you know, I, I just don't see what true advantage, I mean. But that's, so that's the other thing that I want to talk about is the reason for doing this, the only reason I can think of. To truly do this is so people don't have an unfair advantage. That's what the sport, they're trying to limit it to where somebody doesn't have an unfair advantage. But isn't that doing the exact same thing for the people that love to go up in shallow creeks and love to go beat the bank and love to skip on their docks? Isn't that giving them an unfair advantage? Because you've, you've turned it the other way around. You've banned all these guys that are scopers scopers you've you've banned them from being successful so are you just turning it around and giving the people that were not as successful fishing the banks but now you're giving them advantage to try to be more well, successful let's keep it real there is always somebody in those tournaments every tournament you fish somebody has an advantage it's either their yeah. home lake 
they've lived there. They grew up fishing it. So they, they obviously, they have a thousand um, spots marked where, yeah. you, know, you know, you have different equipment. You have different baits. You have... Um, Different sponsors. Just, yeah. Different pockets that you. you can, you don't have to be, you know, mind, you know, your mindset and where you are mentally is probably yep. a huge part of the game out there. It you know, it's like, it's okay. So, I mean, if you got to think about, I got to win all the time because I don't have sponsors that are paying for me. I mean, um, poor Derek over here. <laughs> it's a mental game on him over here. So, I mean, I just don't understand it. And then, you know, the other thing, I know when you first got back into fishing, we had that aluminum boat. And I remember you saying, oh, I can get where some of those bigger boats can't go. because So there are advantages just naturally depending on what equipment you have, yeah. period. I just don't understand why you choose. Like, why has Fort Face and Sonar been singled out? And is it feels like... It's been singled out because there's a lot of people that aren't fishing that are viewers or lovers of the sport that have complained about, I don't want to watch this. I don't want to watch somebody stare at the screen. You know, that kind of thing. And it seems like, because nobody says, well, I don't want to watch that guy with um, an aluminum boat. Yeah. You know, nobody says, I don't want to watch that guy. Whatever the other complaints are, it's just, yeah. it's just an interesting and I'm very interested to see if it actually sticks. Are they going to get so much flack? This is September. Do you think by December? Put it in the comments. I, I'd be interested to see. That might be a um, giveaway. If they'll change their mind. Yeah. Will they change their mind before the season actually starts? And say, mm, after you start thinking about how are people going to keep this off their boats? How are they going to, you know, I just don't feel like it's been thought through very um and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they've already thought about no, it. They said, we we, don't care. So we actually saw that last year. We saw Major League Fishing made the huge announcement uh, beginning of the year, end of last year area, that we're taking the 80 BPT field and we're dropping it uh, down yeah. to 50. Oof. And that was the same thing. It was yeah. a huge backlash of people just irate over it. Oh. And they backed up. And said, okay, we're going to do it softer. We're going to go 65 first and then 50. So next year is supposed to be a 65 cut. Then the year after that is supposed to be a 50. So it's not. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more gradual than just boom, 30 of y'all, bye-bye. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was the same thing. I really feel like the pressure they got, the amount of people hounding about how it was a bad decision uh, changed yeah. their mind. So I don't know. I don't know if MPFL was – Gonna dig their boots in on this, Man, or if they're oh. gonna be. And I don't know how they do their. I mean, when do they put their schedule out? And you know, do they require, you know, that was another thing. Deposits up front and several stuff. Com or... uh, not several, but a few comments were like, "Now we need to see a schedule ASAP." And that's another thing. That's one thing I've always said about this Ford Face and Sonar band. Depends on the lake. Is yeah. that. The tournament directors actually have the ability to control this use of forward face and sonar by the venues they go to. If you still are having classics at the Red River, like you used to have when uh, Chris Lane won back in the day, if if you have classics at that river, I mean, th those guys were fishing in this much water the entire time. Yeah, you don't need it. So you don't need it mm -hmm. there. And that's the thing is that if... They make this band, but they don't think about where they're going, and they still go to three or four uh, northern fisheries that yeah. are traditionally forward facing sonar events. How's that going to play out? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, those places are mostly open water. Like, the St. Lawrence River, um, there, there's a lot of fish offshore in open water so even if the people are not looking at a screen how are they they're still going to be fishing the same kind of stuff i would imagine yeah. i mean that's that's where the fish are the winning caliber fish are so i don't know i don't know how it's a lot to be determined on it and that's there's for no sure. there's no way that all the organizations are going to follow suit because 
if if your MLF and your bass, you're looking at this and going, hey, I got an opportunity, golden opportunity to bring some more people over here because people are going to ditch MPFL that maybe you were mad at us for now, something. Now I think it's going to be. We're gonna, I think you'll see both though. Really? I think you'll actually see some people that people don't like at the Facebook. top that maybe. So maybe they are very successful and they know for the past. So say they had a 20 year career at mm-hmm. the Elite Series. Let's just throw throw a random number out there for an angler. Mm-hmm. They had a 20 year career at the Elite Series. And in the first 15 years, they had X, Y, Z number of wins, mm-hmm. top tens, whatever. And then in the past five years where four face owner has really been a thing, it's they they've started seeing their stats go down. I could see someone like that saying, you know what, I want to get back to my roots. That's what I was. That's what I was more successful at. That's where I got more paychecks at. Yeah, you might. So I could see. I could see the 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 both what are sides the entry of the coin. Fees? Is it for your it's very, angler or is it? More I think of it's a... very comparable. I think it's like comparable to what to to the bigger leagues. I think it's like five thousand or fifty five hundred. I think it's actually more than per. ours. Like fifty seven hundred or something like that. So it's not for a weekend. Don't it, quote it's... me on that. I just remember when I looked. So when I looked this past year, of course, I'm trying to make it to the top. Um, the Opens are doing a great job promoting themselves and showing their their showcase of how to get to the elites. You know, you kind of get to see it. Uh, they increased their payouts this year. So I was looking at the Opens really hard this past year. I was looking at MPFL because I knew MPFL um, is making, they're making strides to try to grow to be a bigger household name. And I was looking Mm -hmm. at them seriously. Um, So that's how I kind of know. I think they were a little bit more expensive than the Invitationals. Um, But don't quote me on that. That's that's kind of one of the things I think I was like, Mm -hmm. "Uh, I wish they were a little cheaper. I don't think they have coverage either, do they? They They do. They do have live, excuse me. They do have live coverage. Um, but that's another thing that cracks me up is let's ban forward facing sonar. So the people who are older, <laughs> the older generation that doesn't want to see that and wants to see the old school fishing, but they probably don't even know how to work a computer or a smartphone to get on these live coverages and watch. So it's kind of in my, you know, could you imagine me trying to tell my mom to, to find, um, the live coverage on the MPFL event to go watch it. Look, if only y'all knew what <laughs> it was She would be like lost. When totally lost. When, she, I don't know. She, okay, so now getting her off of the MLF website would be hard because everybody in this yeah. family is used to going to MLF and we all know how to get there. But boy, if you try to switch and try say, hey, put it on the different. TV. You know, can you stream that to the TV yeah. so we don't have to all sit around this one little computer um, that's when we start to get a little confusing over there. Um, so yeah, to try to tell her to go look somewhere else, anybody, they'd be like, what? Send me the link. It's not working. But Dang same it. time, it could be very exciting. This could be the way we'll all see. bass fishing end up going because we start seeing more, uh, flipping bites and buzz baiting bites and all the things we, we grew up loving. It could, could just be a smorgasbord of that. Going on the MPFL side, and everybody can want a piece of it. Well, let me just say. You never know. I mean, well, then you have an item that you can't resell because nobody's going to want it if it goes away. Oh, the units? Yeah. But, you know, it could be one of those antique type things. Like, you know, this short period of time. Oh, there's still going to be people that want it. I mean, the crappy crappy tournament anglers are still using them. Oh, really? they, They were on the bandwagon before we really were. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, cra- serious crappy tournament fishermen were on the forward facing game way before we were. Um, they were winning tournaments, big tournaments on that stuff. Has anybody complained over there? I don't keep up with it, to be honest. I just know about it. I know that there are, that a lot of those guys have big units, big screens, and that's what they do. What? Because they're so they're doing. Their fishing is a little bit different than ours. So mm-hmm. they're trying to catch a two to two and a half pound crappie. They're trying to catch big crappie. And most crappier, this big. Oh. So, I mean, 
let's be honest, they they their screens They're only targeting bigger they're fish. They're trying right? to target I the big you. fish. So how in the world can they tell the difference between a crappie and a bass? I mean, how do y'all how do you know the difference? I mean, just with you, you how do you know the difference between a striper and a bass on the like I said, it's like what's that a what's lot that of game? A space? lot of it's personality. <laughs> Honestly, well, was what? personality. The personality is fish. <laughs> so if you pull up to the brush pile, now they have personalities. Okay. <laughs> if you pull up to the brush pile, and you see all these little dots really close together, right in the middle of the brush pile, those are probably crappy or bluegill. But if one shoots out, it comes out crazy. No, but then if you aggressive. see this, if you see this big dot sitting kind of off a little bit, oh. or like a big dot really in the base of it, that's probably a bass or a catfish. And then you get to certain places like shoals and stuff like that, and you see all these fish kind of real close to the bottom. Those are catfish or gar. You can kind of just, as you get to using the technology, you can kind of just start, oh, that was what this, and the way they react to your bait, like if you throw to them, and the way they come up to it, and the way that if they come up really fast, more than time that's a bass or a predator fish like a bass or a crappie or whatever. Yeah. They come up pretty fast to get it. Um I guess my point is, I mean, they got just different personalities. It's still, I mean, the way that they eat know. and the way that they they get around structure is just different. It's just interesting it that they're banning that. I just don't know why that's been picked on. It's just been the one item that's been picked on, and to me, I look at it and I'm like, I mean, well, again, this is not new. This is not new. The Alabama rig was the exact same way. I know that was. It was I mean, so sad. I didn't. I did not like that at all. That's. That was one of the times in bass fishing that I sh- probably shook my head the most was because I know for a fact if one of the bigger companies, you can pick your name, but one of the bigger companies in fishing would have came out with that lure, it would have been the hottest selling lure and everybody would have been wanting it and it would have been touted throughout the tournament fishing industry as like this is it let's the tournaments are being won like this let's get more and more better better well it was this was it i mean but who was it, it had, that was fishing with it but it <laughs> it coming from a smaller retailer a mm-hmm. person invent one person inventing it and it kind of slowly trickling into the mainstream it had a lot of hate it had a lot of hate mm. I remember it vividly. It had a lot of people trying to ban it right out the gate. It had a lot of people um, fearful of it right out the gate. I mean, anti. You could catch. You could catch your limit. (laughs) One case. Rarely, I think, did you ever catch a five of them on there. That that was the thing that. So. I love new fishing technology. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just a fan of bass fishing. And that's what... Bass fishing history is new technology. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And I jumped on that man wagon, the A-Rig, and started trying to learn it right at the beginning. And there's so many things to learn with that rig. It's just like everything else. And I had... Several days. You you saw it at the championship at Gunnersville. I I was we were able to throw it at the Toyota Series and at the Toyota Series Championship in Gunnersville. I had six pounds the first day in that tournament, and that was because most of the fish were following it and they were not committing to it. And it was one of the most frustrating days I'd had on the water. <laughs> and the next day, I caught almost twenty pounds on it. You trying to pick what? No, at um, Gunnersville. Oh. So that was the one I had. That So at the third day, I went and fished the international tournament they oh, had yeah, with yeah. Team Spain. I remember. And mm. pulled up to the spot. I caught 20 pounds the day before. Um, if I would have done that two days, I would have been finishing that last day. But <laughs> Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. <laughs> well, I pulled up to the spot. I caught 20 pounds and immediately caught one that was like a full pound spotted bass. And me and the team Spain were hugging and were like, oh my gosh, this is a great way to start. It was like the first yeah. five minutes. Now look up, and there was Kyle Hall in the same cove that I was in. Mm. And I was like, oh, he's the leader. 
So I had to get a translator out and tell the team Spain. I said, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. You I, had to I leave. said, we got to go. And they looked at me like, <laughs> what? We just caught a giant. And I said, there's the leader right there. So we turned around and left. Yeah, I remember. And he won. He won the tournament. And the first day of that tournament, they were following my bait and would not eat it. Alabama ring. Alabama ring. Yes. Yeah. It's not a cure all. It's never been a cure all. Look, fishing. Four Fade Sonar is not a cure all. No. I look at them all the time on that thing and can't get them to bite. Can't figure out what they want. Can't figure out how to do it. Um, it does, might not even be a bass. The screen doesn't all of a sudden do it, a rain, uh, bells and stuff saying bass, 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 bass. That's what I was checking on. That's going to sure be, the, doesn't like, that's that's gonna be the next, next thing. Yeah, evolution. It's going to be able to pinpoint a bass, and then maybe it's going to evolve to where you can actually see that it's really a bass. Like maybe like a nice clean picture, not just a screen with little orange dots yeah, on it. It might actually. Or green dots it might evolve it where it tells you what lure is going to be best at that time. Oh, good grief. By the way it's suspended or the way it's close to the surface. Somebody's going to come up with something. But hey, by that point, you won't be able to use it anywhere. Yep. Who knows? Who knows? Nobody's going to keep going with it, probably. You know, and what was interesting, and see, I'll just be interested to see because um, Ike and Ellie had a live a couple weeks ago. And remember, he had on the, his live a couple of the guys um, that work at Tackle Warehouse. Yes. And um, he asked they, a lot of good questions. He asked that. some good questions. But if you're, not, if thing, you're not going to watch Ike lives, yeah. you need to start doing it. Because he's, he's been in the industry for so long yeah. that he has so many friends and connections. He has so much information that comes at him. And he's got a, he's got a good... He's not closed-minded. You know, he's been a, he's been a sport so long. He's not closed minded about stuff. That's, he's very open minded. He I've seen him look at one co host, get an answer about something, look at another co host, get a completely different answer, and his mind is like, Okay, I see your point. I see your point. You know, he's not and he's a good host. He's just a good a good guy. I think he was probably the first show. Didn't he have the show like it was like the in the city limits fishing or something like that? Yep. What was his show? City limits fishing. City exactly. Limits, right. Yeah. And that was one of the first shows I watched. That's how. That I was mean, such I didn't a good series. Him. I loved that show. That was probably one of the first shows yeah. I watched. We had kids walk up to him when he was fishing in the city, and he'd help them fish and stuff. Yeah, it, it was, was just a good. good. Show. He's just got a great personality for TV. For you know, but there's he, a lot of people that hate Ike too. I mean, he gets a lot of fans that do not like him. You see it all the time. It's just like anything. I don't know. Just well, like four things. I mean, and we ended up. We got to meet him at the. Um, classic remember yeah. we were in the same hotel and we saw him and his wife he was signing and, tackle boxes for the ike foundation well that was in the yeah at the classic he was signing mm -hmm. and he signed i mean just a really nice we guy we saw him at breakfast yeah, yeah. really Good nice dude. guy but i love the show but he had that live and he had the two guys from tackle warehouse and one of the things they talked about which i thought was interesting was um and i don't know if if it was a question that came up on the live or if mike uh i can only asked it i don't know um but it was the about four face and sonar. I think the question was to the tackle warehouse guys was, have you seen your um? What was the question? Yeah, it was something it about was, the lures. Have you? Yes, seen, have you seen your sales go down? Yeah, what for other lures? You know, since four face and sonar has and come they, out, and, and they, they said, said yes. Yes, we have seen a diminish in you know deep diving crankbaits, and you know certain things have gone down. But at the same time. Other things have skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they it'll brought be up interesting that. how it shifts because you know if you if people start to ban if if tournament organizations start to ban it, then you're not going to get any more advancement with it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be investing money into growing it or you know making it better or whatever. So then, are you going to see shifts again back in the tackle? And I wonder. You know, so it's I wonder that just came out two weeks ago or something. Yeah, I wonder. How the big Ford Phase and Sonar companies feel about this. Lawrence, Garmin, Humber. I wonder how they feel about an organization putting such a basically a Hard bad name. Yeah. On their product. On their product. I don't know. I didn't think about that. You know. Yeah. And that's sponsorship dollars too. I don't know if they are sponsored I'm by any of them, but I mean I'm pretty know. sure they sponsor all of the organizations because they're such big companies. Yeah. 
um, every boat now has two to seven units on their boat. I, I don't know so, why you wouldn't want to support the companies that are supporting you. I mean, when you ban something like that, yeah. especially that's a big and ticket maybe item. That's, that's a big ticket item. So, I mean, why would you want to ban that from yeah. stop people from purchasing and that's for sponsors it. that, you know, you're always looking, how can you help your sponsor? I don't we, know. Well, and, and we're talking all hypotheticals. We don't have yeah, any clue, have clue. Uh, what's going on behind the scenes. There may be a literal grassroots movement of we're going to where boats don't cost Maybe. that much because you don't have to put all this equipment on it. We're going back to the basics. We're going to make Tackle Warehouse and other retailers um, jigs and crankbaits and all those uh, products go back up. That's what we're going to do. And that might be what MPFL is starting to do. I don't know. They obviously, it, it sounds like from the comments, I mean, this was not mm -hmm. one. This was several comments of they did not listen to the anglers. Yeah. And, I don't understand. And that, that comment was not, that's what makes me think it's factual. You know, you can only take so much from social media, from internet, period. Mm -hmm. But that's what makes me think it's factual because the comment was like, it was almost like the same comment, but it was from Repeated other ang from yeah, from other anglers. Like, hey, y'all did a yeah. survey. Eighty five percent of us said this is what we want. Why did you go against that? So it's weird. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if any other. You know, there is that talk. There's a little buzz going on from MLF for the BFLs. Is there a possibility so, that they're going to ban it? And you know that I had those two surveys. Yeah. So I had Major League Fishing sent out surveys for the Toyota Series and the BFLs asking questions about Ford Face Sonar. Oh, I didn't realize how, they were asking that. Yeah, how do you feel about it? Would you use it? Would you fish if we banned it? That kind of stuff. It was like, how do you feel about it? Um, and that's I don't know why. Why would you ban it for your? How would you feel if we did half the half the tournament yeah. days with it? Or it was, I just don't know why you would ban it for like BFL and well, that, I don't know. Maybe that's because that's more of that weekend angler, and it's kind of you know you have people that drop in that are maybe local. So this pros goes back to the Ike Live. Have, um, Ike, the, like I said, Ike's he's got a great podcast. You need to go check it out if you're not watching him. Um, but that was another thing he brought up is that he heard that they had lost millions of dollars from the co-angler side oh. because of Fort Wayne Sonar. Co-anglers right. were not fishing these tournaments. That is, that's one thing we have not mentioned on here. Forgot about it because invitationals, you don't fish with co-anglers, but Twitter series you, do, you don't have co-anglers. Oh, really? Nope. MPFL, you don't so have co-anglers. So that's co not even an issue. Yeah, because you do hear nope. that on the other side. Co-anglers are like, oh, well, I'm not even going to show up because all I'm going to be is just behind a boater that puts me yep. out, puts me out way out here and he's just out there fishing. I mean, so, but that doesn't make sense then. You didn't even have, you didn't even have, well, that would make sense. You didn't have why. to appease co-anglers. No. Yeah. BFLs, I kind of yeah. understand it if they go that direction. But I did read a, a comment that I'm like, dude, you're smart. Whoever the comment was, I can't remember who it was, but the comment was, Hey, if we're losing co-angler entry fees on the BFL side, because it's like $200 for a boater, $100 for a co-angler. That's what the entry fees are. And then super tournaments, it bumps up a little bit. Yeah. But, hey, if we're losing that money, why don't you make everybody run POVs like we do in the Invitationals, like they do in the Opens? Run what? Uh, a point of view a POV camera. A GoPro. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. A GoPro. I'm like, what? <laughs> Too GoPro. late for me. Point of view camera. Got it. Um, but run a camera and then make BFLs without a co-angler anyways. And just make the entry fee go up the co-angler amount. People then you Then you get it. But people don't like that. I know, I know. It was just... There are people you take. The guy a, was saying you take a whole opportunity away from people that can't afford a boat that's that true. want to get out. No, there I and love compete. it. I, I mean, love the co angler side of Toyota series and BFL. I think it's it's. You've met so many people. Oh, so many great friends people. Friends from that. Um, I love showing people things and teaching them, and it, I have a heart for that. I don't want that to go. 
You've but, had a lot of the that are actually boater. They have their own boat. Yeah, a lot they of them do have their. They just come. choose because, and that's how you kind of said you started because yep. you said you. And who did you draw that we saw? Um, oh, he's a big name. Hold on a second. So hold on to that. Um, <laughs> but he was just bringing up the point: if it's a money yeah. thing, if it's truly just a money thing, why don't you just instead of the BFL being two hundred for a boater, a hundred for a co angler? Why don't you just make the boaters a three hundred dollar pot uh, uh, entry fee, and then make them run GoPros, and that's the way you settle that as far as keep you from cheating, and also get your the exact same amount of money per entry, just like you were doing, and you don't have to worry about if co anglers don't want to fish it. That was what he was bringing up: is that hey, we can fix that money problem by doing this. Uh, but no, I don't want the co anglers to go just no. the same as you. Um, as anybody really, uh, co-anglers is a, there's some people that don't have, they have a disdain for co-anglers, but I, most of my friends, most people I know, most professionals I know, we enjoy fishing the co-angler tournaments, to be honest. It's, it's cool. Who was it that, cause you got to talk to him too. He's, he's a big name that you fished a big event. Um, was it at Smith or something or bugs? I don't know that you did. And, um, you drew a boater. Are you talking about Marty Robinson? Yeah. Because at the Toyota Series Championship, yes. I brought it up. Cause, yes. Um, it was kind of how you started. Or... Yeah, so when the Elite Series had co-anglers. They had co-anglers back in the Elite Series oh. back in the day. And I fished a local event, Smith Mountain Lake, and I drew... Gerald, as a co-angler. As a co-angler. I, I drew Gerald Swindle. I drew Marty Robinson. I drew... Um, it wasn't Steve Kennedy. It was another Kennedy. What was his name? I had never heard of him before the tournament. Uh, what was his name? I'm, it's going to drive me crazy not knowing his name. <laughs> but I, I drew him. And that was it. That was how I drew. Those are the three I drew. But I had buddies of mine that were fishing in co-tournaments, and they told me about what they, who they drew. They drew you know other people as well. Um, but it was just a cool event because it, it, it's – they – Totally different fishing styles. It was a summer tournament on Smith Mountain Lake. My stepdad, me and Tim, had won two weekends before, had won a tournament on Smith Mountain Lake. And we were fishing this one certain way offshore, right? Mm -hmm. Those three pros I drew, all of them had a totally different fishing style and none of them were fishing like we did. None of them. It was so crazy. I'm thinking of, I think I'm thinking Learned of somebody so else. so much. Who was the guy that was in the race for the, um, with Martin Villa last year? In the race? Not... The points race with Martin Villa, we kept, they kept flipping back and forth between first and second last year. Oh, are you talking about Ron Nelson? I think who so. Who won AOI last year? Yes, I think so. Was it him that you fished with? No, I fished against him. Oh, I I, all against. these stories blend together yeah, for me. There's I mean, pieces here and there a, that kind of come. But I'm like, when he said, I'm like, no, small I, community. I think I know who Marty is. And I remember you talking to him about yeah, I fished fishing against, with him. When I fished that um, that tournament, the Smith Mountain, uh, it was a Strin series back then. It was basically a Toyota series. Um, that was my first tr real try to go to the top. Mm. And that first tournament was a Smith Mountain Lake. Uh, I finished fourth in that event, and Ron Nelson won it. Okay. And I was telling him. <laughs> That's right. Um, I just re-congratulated him. Like, do you remember that tournament? So this such a long time ago. He's like, oh, man, I was like getting my career. I was like, yeah. I said, uh, you know, I had a bad break in that tournament. I'm sure you did too, but I had some bad breaks in the tournament. I had one that was a six-pounder that it was on a bed, and I hooked it right underneath its chin when it was I was sight fishing it. It grabbed the worm tail and when I set the hook I hooked it under the chin. And my co angler netted the fish and threw the net in the bottom of the boat and when he threw the net in the bottom of the boat with the fish, the hook popped out of the fish. Mm hmm And but I saw the hook under the chin as I was fighting because it was crystal clear water. I mean it was sight fishing. Mm -hmm. Crystal clear water. I could see the hook was right here underneath the chin and when I got 
when I got the fish in and I, I knew, like, I, I immediately got deflated, like, man, I snagged this fish. I got to put it back. Because that's the way the rules read. You're yeah. sight fishing. It has to be hooked inside the mouth. Can't foul hook it, yeah. Um, so I was totally deflated. My co-angler netted the fish, threw it in the bottom of the boat, and was hopped back on the back deck and was like, man, yeah. He, he was excited. He's pumped for me. <laughs> and I said, dude, I got to throw it back. And he's like, what do you mean you got to throw it back? I said it wasn't hooked inside the mouth. I saw it. It was underneath the chin. He said, I didn't see it. I said, it doesn't matter if you saw it. I said, I saw it. And so I put that fish back, and that fish cost me the wings. I only lost by like a pound and a half or something like that. That fish definitely that lost me That was when they wings. were doing the weigh-ins in the parking lots of like Walmart, wasn't it? Yes. Yep. <laughs> I remember yep. that. Meetings in, that was back in the old days. Oh, the old days. Old days. Meetings in the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> so for those of y'all that don't know, I've been trying for so long in my life to make it in professional fishing. And... I'm going to do the engine sound. <laughs> like the little <laughs> train. Like, yeah, the little, the little train. The little train that could. could. But trying. <laughs> and I'd get up that hill a little bit and then slide and then, back down. Get up the hill a little bit and slide back down. Was that the same year that um, your motor blew up? That was the year my motor blew up. That was the year that I had hydraulic tilt issues in another tournament that I needed. To, but I needed Champlain, my motor to tilt. it was like blew up, and we were trying to find like literally. Yep. You're like walking in yep. to the meetings. I was like, okay, I can't even fish this. Yeah. So I've had struggles. <laughs> struggles. Yeah. So. Uh, please root for me because I've been where everybody else has been at the bottom trying to figure it up, you know, trying to figure it out and had those struggles. It's a good way to segue into what our next one should be, which is sponsors. You're, you're at the end of the year. Come yes. Up with the end of the year. That's a good thing to talk and about. And talk about how much of... Because it's scary. It's a scary situation like. to talk about sponsors. A lot of people don't talk about it. How to approach sponsors. Uh, what exactly sponsors look for. All that stuff. Well, I mean, you're coming up on... I mean, I get that question a lot on yeah. social media from friends and, and people trying to, you know, make it in this business or whatever. Um, and I'm not the best at it by no means, but I've been doing it for a long time. So I've kind of learned a thing or two. We're just trying to make it. Um, <laughs> We're but, still on the trying to make it bus. <laughs> but the thing I needed, the boost I needed what? that I didn't have all along was giving my life completely to God. Yeah. And when I started thinking bigger picture not thinking about you know simple minded just fishing just fishing that's the only way I'm going to make it is if I focus on just fishing and started focusing on who I want to be and who I want to mm -hmm. portray to my children and and to uh, family and friends and and uh and how God is a part of my life and how, you know, that relationship is important to me. And the more I've strived for that, the more doors have opened up, mm -hmm. the more success, successes I've had along the way. Um, and we've had some really awesome experiences mm -hmm. that we know were God-driven. God has definitely blessed me. And still struggle. I mean, we're, we're humans. Mm -hmm. we, we all have, we have our tempers and our problems and and our financial and and our uh faith struggles of just you know lord why am i going through this and that kind of yeah. stuff and we all have that yep i know i'm not i'm not free from that but i know for a fact my relationship our relationship is a lot closer to god than it's ever been and it's the past three years going on four Going on four. No, this is the third year. No, this is going to be the fourth year. 2025. Is going to, yes. Because I'm at the end of 24 almost. You just put out, you just put Halloween stuff up. Come on now. Come on now. That That's not even, when Christmas stuff comes out, oh, now you can start man. telling me what the okay. year. But that, this year is just This going. will be year four <laughs> coming up um, of this dream, doing it full time. And I've had some amazing sponsors. Please. Support the sponsors that support us. Because they're not just supporting us. They're supporting the sport. Yeah. They're su I mean, without the players, the sport doesn't exist. Without the the help behind the scenes as far as a lot of these companies, these bigger companies, they're promoting 
they're they're sending commercials and advertising money and all that to these to these organizations. So support the people that support this sport. Mm-hmm. Truly, I mean, I we say that all the time. Us professional anglers say it all the time, but we get to see firsthand how much it means mm-hmm. that when you are supporting the companies that support this or this uh, whole network and support sure. the whole thing whole thing when you support those companies it truly makes the sport grow yeah um so we know firsthand that you know it's we we thank you we thank you for doing that cuz there's a lot of stuff you can you know buy and um use and promote that's not affiliated to the sport mm-hmm. i mean there's a lot of companies that are just in it for their own sake but there's a lot of companies that actually support the anglers and support the sport. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones I feel like need to get a little, like a little extra love, a little extra attention, because yeah. this sport wouldn't exist without them. Mm-mm. That's for sure. Should we wrap it up right there? That way. Well, I'm out of tea, so yeah, I think it's a good time know, to wrap it up. My tea got cold a long time ago. Tea got real cold. <laughs> Fort but, face and sonar. Man, I feel like that's all we talked about is Fort face and sonar. That's what the whole point was. I know, but. We've I feel segued. Like I'm we tired a, of talking we, about four faces. We have sonar. a good segue to the to the next one. No sickness this week. We roll into. Oh no, you won't be here next week. Never mind. Oh, wh- shameless plug right here. Shameless plug. I dropped a video Saturday it is your channel Saturday night. I dropped a video of top four baits. Two fish for shallow water bass in September. And these guys on the MPFL, they probably should go check that out. <laughs> because they're going to need it. You might need to know that. They're going to need it. I, I spent a lot of years with a lot of great mentors and a lot of time on the water in September. So I've got a lot of history on catching bass shallow without forward facing sonar this time of year. And that's what I posted about. So... Top four baits for September for shallow water September bass. Go check it out. It's a great, great video on giving you some four baits you can put on and you can go catch some bass up in that skinny water without the forward face of sonar. So yeah. we will we will put that. If we one get out. the band on the in Major League Fishing, how are you gonna react to that? If you get it on the invitations? Yeah. If Major League Fishing says no way no. No four face sonar. Um, they jump on the bandwagon. What do you think? I want a refund. Why? I want my four face sonar money. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna sell it? Who's gonna buy it? That's the that's, whole that's point. True. You got some Elite Series guys. Elite Series Please. guys. Please. Oh, that probably be running too now. Like ha! <laughs> the price dies. Am I gonna go to the opens? Golly, Mm-mm. I don't know about all that now. Don't know. That's nine events, right? No, it is. It's not. Their season's long. It's a long. They're, they're still going. Long. I think they they're got, only halfway done. They got three more or four more events left. They it's still got fun a long watching. Season. I kind of like that they go at not. Yeah. I don't like it for. I wouldn't like it if you were still going right now. It's kind of nice that it's kind of starts to get into like championships and yeah. and other events and. Um, it is kind of nice, though, to have that kind of level of tournament still going on to be able to watch live. And the BPT, isn't that still going on? Or are they finished? BPT finished. They're done. But they just started their They're, team, they're doing their team series. So the team they series. They schedule their team series for the fall. Which is smart. I like that idea. Yeah, 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 it, it's, it's nice cool. to have that kind An of extended. level still going on. Are it was a really good... Done? Huge congratulations to Matt Becker... And yes. Spencer Sheffield for winning the team series. That was really cool. I, I don't know if y'all um, even caught a piece of it. Uh, yeah. it, it was on live on MLF, uh, uh, MajorLeagueFishing.com. But it was just a good event. Hearing them, hearing the two anglers in the same boat on the front deck, you know, all pro vets uh, talking about strategizing and, I think it's watching uh, live. Dustin Connell got a hook in his hand. I saw Jacob Wall got hooked by um, Bobby Lane. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of drama. Every fish was counting big time because they were on a fishery. They were up in uh, Lake Erie area, Pensacola or something like that, I think it was called. 
but they Pensacola, they were Pensacola in Florida. I don't know what they where they was. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Pensacola's in Florida. I don't know. Oh, I'm trying to remember the name. I'm not, I'm getting too old. Um, but it's late. <laughs> but it was just it was a where they were. It was just every one pounder. Was was counting and it was like they were like so is that a, every forth. fish counts or is yes, it a five? Like every fish counts. Oh. Yeah, and it was it was it was an epic event, good event. Congratulations to those guys for winning it, Matt and uh, are Spencer. Are the elites over? Or are they still going? The elites are done. They are done. Yes, okay. they are done. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, they had all their um. Aoy, stuff. they don't have a championship, do they? The, the, the classic, the classic is the for next year is their championship. Is the yes. championship? Yes. So most of the big events are gone, are are done. So except for MPFL, I think actually has a couple more. Um, the Opens got some more, um, but we're 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 turning course. We, we got some more Toyotas. I got a Toyota coming up, the Santee Cooper. Yeah. Got Toyota Series Championship. You if got I qualify English for choice. it, I got English Choice Championships. I got English Choice Events. You got a lot of stuff still fish. Yeah, if you're local, well, not even necessarily local. I mean, English Choice. I mean, they go to North Carolina and yeah. Where else they go? Mostly it's North Carolina and Virginia. They're worth it? the drive. To be honest, if you're within five hours yeah. of their tournament trail, it's really worth the drive. And a lot of times, I'd say more than that probably. Yeah, a lot of times, like the one that's coming up. Um, where is that one? Lake Jordan. The next one coming up is Lake Norman. Lake Norman, that um. A lot of times with Angler's Choice, and I like how they do this, it's two days that are back-to-back, -back, but they're not two-day tournaments. It's sing individual days yes. of competition. But it's nice because really you get nice. two tournaments, two opportunities to win, um, and you don't have to keep traveling back and forth. Like, you know, if you did travel from a good little bit away or whatever, you can stay for the weekend and then, you know, fish on Saturday and fish on Sunday. It's two different tournaments. Yeah. Um, you know, you're guaranteed to fish the two days. I don't know. It's nice. They, they, and if you get dialed in on the fish, it, a lot of times exactly. you do get double double You get pay another days. day. Yeah. yeah. Another day that stands alone. Yes. Which yep. is nice. But they do. They have good events and good people over there running those. Great. The rain, great. The weigh-ins are always mm -hmm. fast, go through quick. Um, they got so many side pots. Well, I wouldn't call them side pots. They're just like contingency pots yeah. where uh, smallest fish, smallest no, biggest three fish, smallest five fish. They have all these different prizes that are like separate. They have a drawing for just a, a random boat yeah. in the mornings. They have a they, lot of where you can buy so many different things. Yeah, raffle tickets. But they tickets. always have their tournaments go a little you know, a bit past. Of, they give a lot of great stuff away in their raffle, like batteries. and. But their and, tournaments go past like the MLF, yeah, most of the apparel, events and stuff. stuff so like you that. still have opportunity. It's kind of nice that those yeah. go into the fall. And then they also have if you so this, we're telling you all this because twenty twenty five I know they're gonna have another awesome tournament yeah. season just like they, they have, have two trails Virginia yep. and North Carolina. Um, but just keep them in mind because if you fish so many events like it's this year it was six you know they change it around sometimes but if you fish six events you get into both of their championships they have a North Carolina championship mm -hmm. and a Virginia championship so you qualify for both of them by just fishing six events so. I mean, there's no big tournament trail like that, that you fish six events and you get two championships to fish for big money. I so, didn't realize that. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. They got a really great tournament trail. Yeah, but they, they go into fall. I mean, that's yeah. where they're going in because they have that one. And then there's, I think, another one after that. Oh, and also while we're talking about English Choice, they are the biggest Triton and Ranger dealer in the nation. Ranger. Um they and they sell nitro, but right now is their time that they they have so many great sales on right now, like five six thousand dollars off of products and they're and, into summer sales, thousand dollar gift cards and I mean just it's they're in this uh, in the summer, summer sale, sale. yes. Mm -hmm. So their sale at this time of year, um, you know, most people think of buying boats in the springtime. That's when all the boat shows are. That's mm. when you're. That's when the uh, open house for English Choice is in this the winter, in winter, January. winter, winter, spring. Yeah, the beginning of the spring, mm -hmm. winter. That's when the boat shows and everything are. But this time of year, they are switching their inventory. They're getting the next year's products in, and they're trying to switch that inventory out. They got a lot of pros that um, that if they're getting a new boat, they take their boats in right now because the season, like we said, the season's ended. So if you 
you can get a pro's one year or two year used boat for a great deal mm -hmm. um, right now. They just got so many great opportunities to buy right now. So if you're in the market, yeah. uh, don't wait till spring. Uh, normally the prices are, you know, they have some deals, but it's not quite the savings you can get right now. Mm -hmm. The savings right now are huge, ridiculously good. One more plug. What? And then we'll end it. Okay. You didn't tell them where they can come see you on Saturday. And they shouldn't miss the event anyway. Oh. So you were talking about, you were sharing. I'm excited about it. You were sharing it. a little bit of testimony. And I was like, wait a minute now, you better bring up oh, Beast Oh, yes. I'm excited about it. So. Uh, and who's going to be there? Super awesome opportunity to get to go uh, share some of my fishing knowledge at the Thomas Rowe Baptist Church Beast Feast. Saturday. This Saturday. Uh, what day is that? I've closed mine because I can't keep up with days. It's that the 7th. Yes, mm -hmm. the 7th. Um, but the Beast Feast. And I'm going to be doing it with no other than living legend. Drum roll. Hank Parker. Hank Parker and me are going to be teaching all these people how to catch them without forward facing sonar. No, no, it's going to be... Fall Pretty transitions much. and um, a lot of great knowledge we're going to be sharing in that cool. That's a super cool event. It's free to attend. Yeah. All you have to do is register so you can get your information in there so they can expect you to come and they can get a kind of head count on who all is going to be there. But free. It's free. Yep. Beast Feast, Thomas Road Baptist Church. Huge event. Come on down. Hank Parker, me. That's just the fishing scene. There's a lot more people talking there. There's yeah. a lot more. Uh, Going kind of on seminars, super stuff. awesome feasts of tons of different wild game that you've probably never had in your entire life. Mm -hmm. Check it out, the Beast Feast at Thomas Road Baptist Church. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, super excited to do that. Uh, thank you, Brandon Pritchett, my team partner for Angler's Choice Team Tournament Trails. He normally does it, and he just had a conflict this year, and he was I was the first person he thought of to. Uh, go there and, and take his place, and I appreciate that. I'm really excited about it. Um, hopefully next year he doesn't make me give a spot back up to him and because uh, I I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I've heard a lot of great things about it. I've never been there. I've never been to the Beast Feast. So. You talked about it's always, your dad. It's and... most of the time been conflicts, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Every year we've tried to do it, um, but it's always been a tournament or something you know, pressing up against it. So You have the same thing happening this year, though, but... You made it work out. Yeah, made it work out. I was going to leave for the Toyota Series at Santa Cooper a little early and be a, and like yeah. be a conflict, but God comes first, and the opportunity is just laid in my lap. Thank you, Brandon, for that. I'm super excited about it. I'm really really pumped about it. I'm I'm I hear the food is phenomenal. Look, I I really want you know um, inside story Hank Parker. Um, he doesn't like fish on his boat. You don't put a fish on his... Uh, now, he's a great fisherman. Obviously, he catches fish, but you better not lay him on his carpet or inside his boat because um, he's going to kick you out of that boat. So, I would love for Derek just to have, like, if you have a TV screen or something, just have, like, start off right here with a picture of, like, you, like, have a fish Have a catfish laying. right on the carpet. Just anything. Just, just lay on the off. carpet. Yeah, just to, he, just to start it off. Boy... You probably catch some <laughs> flack from that one. He, told us, he, he got on a Derek. He, he told us that at a boat show when uh, I showed him a fish I had caught on the carpet. And he freaked out over it. He, well, he, that was all he could he think said, about. He you he ain't being loud in my boat. Yeah, he didn't care what kind of fish, how big it was, uh, was what funny. it was. The first thing he saw, he looked up at me and he said, Is, it, is that his fish on the, on the carpet of the boat? That was funny. He's like, oh, you're not allowed to fish in my boat. So <laughs> Derek's lost his opportunity to fish with Hank Parker in yeah, his boat. Let so. me, let me fish with him. <laughs> he but might get in yours, but you're not getting maybe, in his. Maybe if I don't talk about it, though, maybe he'll let me back in. Good graces. Maybe I'll get his good graces at the Beast Feast. Um, I don't know. I would think y'all's minds, fishermen's minds, <laughs> we, I'm going to say that. We ain't going to stop. Y'all He might bring it up before I ever do. He will probably remember. He'll look at you and say, mm -hmm, that's the guy. Oh, that's the guy. Don't let him get in your boat. <laughs> hey, this guy banned. I'm not going to let him in my boat. Yeah. Probably. But thank you all for tuning in. Yep. If you've made it to this point, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging in there. Please, please smash that like button. Please comment. Let us know what you like about these 
not yeah. podcasts worth doing. We just what enjoy. You don't like. We just enjoy talking about it, and and obviously the last one got a lot of views. Um, so obviously you you enjoy it too. So we're gonna keep doing these. Uh, sorry we missed last week, but we're gonna we're gonna make it you know a regular thing because we enjoy it. Yeah. Next topic: sponsorship. You think so? That's what it should be. You heard it here. You heard it here. Next one. We're gonna give you all the deets, all yeah. the the like. We're gonna give you numbers of who to talk to. No, no, no. We yeah, right. Not yeah. gonna do that. No, yeah. no, no. no. That, that hey, was a little, hey that was if too we much. had numbers, we'd be calling much. them. If y'all have yeah, numbers, true. give them to us, please. True. Drop them yeah. in the comments. Comments below. Comments. Is, a, is there an inbox on YouTube? Can you message? This is how unfamiliar I am with YouTube. I, think you, I don't know if you can DM on YouTube. I was gonna say he's honestly, DM. I do not know if you can DM on YouTube. I don't think YouTube. there's a message section, so whatever. Just drop a numbers drop in the, the comments. comments. We'll, all, we'll yeah. all call them up. Yeah, we'll all get sponsorships. Yeah, everybody call them. Everybody sponsorships yeah. all around for everybody. Free stuff, free for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it worked like that, it'd be awesome. It'd be you amazing. Know? Like just show up at the line. Hey. After this band, might be able to get some free forward facing sonar. <laughs> Thank you all Decorate for tuning balls. in. Uh, we hope you have a great night. Uh, well, you might not be watching this at nighttime. That's the that's the crazy thing. Somebody might be watching this three weeks from now. But anyways, yeah. thank you all for tuning in. Please like it. Please comment. Please hit that subscribe, subscribe. button. Thank you all, and God bless you all.